Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing another hypothetical versus battle that would have occurred during the Cell Saga of Dragon Ball Z, and more specifically, after the main villain was first introduced back in Ginger Town, when he was absorbing the entire city. This would be a fight between Imperfect Cell and Super Saiyan Vegeta before he went into the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, and the question of who exactly would have actually been able to win if that hypothetical battle went down as opposed to what occurred in the original story with Vegeta instead replacing Piccolo. So let's be getting into that right now. But before I begin, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, enabling all notifications so you can stay up to date with all my future videos. Additionally, make sure to leave a like if you like the video, share it out with your friends, share your own thoughts down below in the comments, and with that being said, let's get into the video. So let's begin with the power of the Saiyan Prince Vegeta right now. After he had achieved the Super Saiyan transformation, which is something that he was striving for since well before even Goku got it. Something that he wanted to achieve all throughout the time on Namek, and he was finally able to do so and showed it off when he showed up in order to fight against Android 19. Now in terms of the power of Vegeta on display, we have to do it comparatively against 19, because after the death of Frieza, uh, there is no other power level that's indicated to us, really ever since Namek, uh, unless you count the five that they scan for trunks and the killy units that they use in the Boo Saga. But in terms of the power of 19, he actually was even stronger than before, as you can see right here, Dr. Jiro, or Gero in the uh, Japanese says, greedy pig, you've already raised your maximum power by draining the energy of Sun Goku, and yet you ask me for more, so be it. But in exchange, I alone will take the remaining four. And so, this is where we get an indication of just how powerful 19 is. Not only was he powerful enough to take a beating from a weakened uh, Super Saiyan Goku who was suffering from the effects of the heart virus, but also he drained his energy, so he's even stronger now. This is what leads to Vegeta powering up to Super Saiyan against him, and then basically stomping him during the course of their fight. Android 19 punches him, Vegeta, you know, in the English dub, he's like, that was for free if I remember correctly, but in this one, I suppose that's the most I could expect, you know? he uh, He's really hyped himself up at this moment. He's been waiting years for this, and he's finally gonna show off how awesome he is, basically. In which he uh, kicks him right through. This is one of the things I love in this arc, especially where Toriyama, uh, you know, shows characters getting hit so hard that you could actually see the imprint of the, uh, the foot or the fist or whatever, you know, they're being hit with, uh, kind of like what we saw with Android 17 and Piccolo during their fight. Now, as we see right here too, which I even mentioned before, Vegeta did go on to stomp Android 19 and showing off just how much more powerful he was than this powered up already Android, which in turn led to him actually letting himself have his energy be absorbed and using this opportunity to rip off the arms, the hands of Android 19 flying up in the air, and with the remaining energy, which, you know, wasn't really actually that much considering what we see next, he fires his big bang attack directly at 19, blowing him up, and then after this, we see that Vegeta actually has to transform back into his base, he's so exhausted, and he even tells Android 20 this as a means of bluffing him. Android 19, or Android 20 in this case, who is Dr. Jiro, doesn't take the bait, and so he actually runs away, even though, as Piccolo points out momentarily, Vegeta really did lose quite a bit of strength. He drew the fight out intentionally just so he could confirm that the artificial humans drain energy through their palms. If number 20 had called his bluff, Vegeta would have certainly lost. He acted as if it were nothing at all. He truly is a genius when it comes to the battlefield. It's possible that he's even surpassed Goku. And this is something that's mentioned a number of times during this particular early section of the arc leading up to the fight with the androids, which is something that you could actually see me discuss more in depth in a video in the top right corner, why Super Saiyan Vegeta was actually stronger than Super Saiyan Goku during this very point, 
I also discussed another video you could see in the top right corner, uh, who would have actually won between the two before they went into the hyperbolic time chamber. That's another what if fight that I've done in the past. Now, eventually we see Vegeta tested, pushed to his limits, and also beaten down during his fight against Android 18. And as we could see at first, neither one of them is actually going full power. As Vegeta says after he blasts the uh, truck driver right here, rest in peace, I don't think he ever even got wished back, Android 18 says, you haven't been giving me your best. And Vegeta says, of course I haven't. If I were to fight you seriously, I doubt the planet could handle it. You know, in different translations, he would easily blow away the planet if he really went all out, which is kind of the overall point that he's making. And so uh, Android 18 also confirms that she was holding back the whole time as well. And so she decides to go all out, according to her own words, where she immediately takes the, the attack to Vegeta, dealing damage to him, going through his uh, key barrier and force field and bloodying him up with that headbutt, and then the two of them begin to fight. 18 continues to have the advantage, however, Vegeta doesn't exactly go down immediately. He bounces off rocks, he jumps and headbutts her himself, double axe handles her into a mountain, blasts her, and actually in the process of doing this, he is able to damage her clothing, as you can see, going through her force field as well, and actually doing more damage overall considering what we could see the visible damage comparative to what Vegeta got even though she isn't really drawing blood too much right now. He does say, though, that she isn't actually phased, and at this point, uh, Android 18 is uh, surprised by the power of Vegeta, which should really go to show that, despite the fact that Android 18 is definitely the more powerful of the two here, Vegeta still is actually giving her somewhat of a fight. We don't really know what percentage of her power he is, but it really is made to be a bigger deal that Vegeta is losing stamina, as we mentioned right here. Vegeta is going to get himself killed. Take a closer look. The artificial human is gradually wearing him down. The enemy's power is seemingly infinite, but Vegeta's stamina is taking a hit with every move he makes. This is when we see 18 gets even more of the advantage. Vegeta is getting knocked back. And then eventually, he can't take it anymore and gets his left arm broken, which is what leads to Trunks jumping in and everything just kind of going uh, going downhill immediately, where the androids uh, just start to wreck everyone, including Piccolo, who I'll be getting into momentarily. And here's another example of somebody getting punched and it expanding outward. You know, Piccolo probably doesn't have, uh, you know, stretchy body like uh, Stretch Armstrong or something like that. But either way, we see that Vegeta, he got wrecked and he got left laying after Android 18 broke his second arm as well, leaving him powered back down and reverting back to his normal form. So again, I think that the mention that Piccolo makes down here of the fact that the androids have infinite energy, and that's the main reason why Vegeta is going to lose because she's wearing him down, is a indicator that Vegeta is not vastly below Android 18 in terms of being many times weaker or something like that. After all, the thing is that if she was many times stronger, and that's the reason why she breaks his arm and ultimately defeats him, then as a result, that wouldn't have even been a thing worth making mention of because Android 18 simply could have one-shot Vegeta or put him down without ever having to wear him down in the first place. And even though, according to what Android 18 says herself, that she isn't going to hold back and she's going to go all out against Vegeta, which he starts to do, Vegeta is still able to get in some shots against her and fire an attack that gets through her barrier enough to damage her clothing, even though it doesn't do any serious damage. So again, I think that that means that Vegeta wasn't many times weaker or vastly weaker than her, depending upon, you know, what you view as vast in this franchise because some people think it's like a trillion times whereas others it's about 10 percent it depends on how you actually look at the anime and manga power scaling but either way it's pretty clear that vegeta despite being the most powerful fighter here at the time that isn't evil or at least super evil or at least antagonistically evil at this point in time i suppose until afterward when he plans to kill goku and then he would be a villain again he still isn't at the level of androids 18 or 17 however a character that does become at the level is Piccolo. And this is after he goes and merges with Kami uh, and becomes, once again, the nameless Namekian, which is what leads to him, in turn, going on to fight Cell, as we see the introduction of the second fighter in this battle. And this is where we get 
Imperfect Cell's initial power, or at least the power after he absorbs everyone within Ginger Town, because we never truly get to see just how powerful Cell is when he is not after absorbing a bunch of people, even when he attacks Trunks in the future. This is still after he'd absorbed people for years in the wastelands of the future before he showed up to kill Trunks when he was going to go back in time to warn everyone, even though it did say that he would have actually gone back in time a year before he initially did, which would have created an entirely new timeline and then in turn, you know, ruined everything. So I don't know what the heck he was thinking. The fact of the matter is we get to see what both Piccolo and Cell are capable of after Cell powers up during the midst of their conversation, and so too does Piccolo. Which is where Piccolo actually tells Cell that he done goofed, because he says, the fact that you dealt with all the residents in this town works out quite nicely in my favor. This way, I'm free to go all out. So Piccolo doesn't really have to worry about collateral damage and proceeds to blast Cell uh, pretty close to his face. I would say right in the face, but you know, at least a meter or two away from him for my uh, metric system fans out there. And at this point, we're told by Android 16 that one of them has enough power to rival Android 17 and 18. Of course, that is going to be a reference to Piccolo because we do see him go on to fight against Android 17 later on in the arc and one of the best fights in the entire franchise. However, the fact that he is saying that only one of them has the power to rival these two should showcase that Cell at this point is weaker than the androids, which only makes sense because he does go on to absorb even more people after escaping at the end of this fight. But either way, what occurs is that Piccolo at first seems to have the advantage over Cell up until what ends up happening, which is that Cell surprises Piccolo by using the Kamehameha against him, which in turn Piccolo jumps out of the way of, Cell jumps out from behind him in the midst of the smoke and the mushroom cloud that he caused, and then what happens? Well, Cell absorbs Piccolo's uh, left arm. Always a left arm is not a Toriyama, which is actually something that we go to find out is all a ploy on Piccolo's behalf, because of course, despite Despite the fact that Cell seems to have either forgotten or just, you know, didn't realize that this version of Piccolo could regenerate, he is able to and does it right here. However, when the ploy actually began here is kind of up in the air. Ironically, as you can see, they are actually up in the air. Did it begin before he allowed Cell to grab him and then go to absorb him? Or did it only begin after he escaped and got back down on the ground and then started to feign that he uh, no longer had the ability? Ability to maintain his balance, which makes quick movements more difficult, and by admitting this, uh, looks like Cell is one. I feel like that's probably where Piccolo started to kind of improvise here, because despite the fact that Piccolo did have his arm absorbed by Cell, which in turn probably would have caused some kind of, uh, you know, weakening of his overall energy, because it's the bio extract and energy that Cell is in turn absorbing from him. We could even see him huffing and puffing a little bit right here. The fact of the matter is that Cell seems to have genuinely caught Piccolo off guard right here. Whether it's because of the fact that he was really surprised by the fact that Cell was firing a yellow Kamehameha. I don't know why they always color it yellow in the in the manga, in the full color manga, but nonetheless they did. And uh, it looks like he jumped out and was able to actually get the advantage over Piccolo here. We see that Piccolo is sweating from this whole encounter. You know, that's usually a sign that uh, it's kind of a oh no moment and uh, things are actually getting real. And Piccolo doesn't immediately break free of this either. He still does have his arm drained in the process. So I kind of feel like it's more that Piccolo kind of came up with this whole thing on the fly after he saw the situation they were in and Cell seemed to believe that he had won. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that uh, it still is a showcase of Cell's power and speed that he was able to even temporarily catch this powerful Piccolo off guard. And this is also where Cell explain some of the other techniques he has the ability to do, such as the Genki Dama or the Spirit Bomb that he thinks he could do. I believe in the anime they also have Cell say that he could possibly do the Kaioken, even though we never once see him do it, except perhaps if you want to say that he was using an invisible one, which again, there's literally no proof to ever say that. But nonetheless, the fact of the matter is that this is where Cell takes the opportunity to escape. Now, as Cell is running away, we do get a really interesting scene where Cell is plotting about how he's going to absorb another city until he senses Vegeta and goes and hides behind a tree. Now, Vegeta, when he's flying by, Cell is noticing his power and he's saying, Vegeta, 
Why is he here? He hasn't gotten himself killed by 17 or 18 yet? What's more, his power far exceeds what I expected from him. It would be wise to speed up the process. So, the fact of the matter is that Cell is very cautious of Vegeta sensing his power right here, and at the same time is saying that he needs to speed up the process of absorbing another city, which seems to be implying that Vegeta here is even more powerful than Cell theoretically. However, with that being said, Vegeta on his way here also says something himself, which is, one of the two ridiculously high battle powers I've been sensing has suddenly disappeared, but the second second one is still there dead ahead. It couldn't be number 17 or any of the artificial humans, they didn't give off any presence at all. So just who's down there? And of course we do see right here that it's actually Piccolo powering up and Vegeta is completely shocked by the power of Piccolo on display, which he then goes on to say in his own internal monologue, that battle power, there's no mistake, it definitely surpassed my own, even as a Super Saiyan. But that can't be, he's just an Namekian. In some other translations it says that his power far surpassed Vegeta's. So we're getting the estimation that Vegeta is in fact weaker than Piccolo, but so too is of course Imperfect Cell. Because the fact that Piccolo goes on to fight against Android 17 and is basically even with him, and you could argue he would have been able to defeat 17 with some of his techniques, which I discuss in another video you can see in the top right corner breaking that down. We're also never given any indication that Vegeta actually got stronger after the fight. He took a Sensu Bean, but then when he went and flew off, he was having another temper tantrum, like he often does, and he's talking about that he thought the Super Saiyan was supposed to be invincible, and that he was defeated casually, and that he should be the strongest in the universe, but then he wonders about whether his biology is inferior to an artificial human. And then in turn, he plans to surpass them, so it doesn't really seem like there's any indication that he ever gets any type of Zenkai boost from fighting the androids, or really that any of the Z fighters get any Zenkai boost really at all moving forward. The only Zenkai boost we even get in the franchise at this point in time uh, is Cell after his self-destruction when he returns at the end of the arc. So again, there's no indication that Vegeta got stronger despite the fact that he fought against Android 18. However, with that in mind, we still do have the scene right here, which could be a smoking gun for the Vegeta side, in which we see that Cell not only stopped his fleeing because he didn't want to be sensed by Vegeta, but then in turn doesn't even attempt to fight Vegeta here. He doesn't attempt to absorb him. He doesn't even see Vegeta as somebody that he wants to mess with. Instead, he senses the power of Vegeta on display. He says that his power far exceeds what I expected from him, and it would be wise to speed up the process. Typically in this case, if Toriyama wanted to convey to us that a character is weaker than somebody else, uh, or stronger in this case, let's say, that Cell would be saying something along the lines of, uh, well, my power is still greater than his, but perhaps I should increase the gap even further, something like that. But at the end of the day, there is no such statement. Instead, Cell runs in the opposite direction, saying that it would be wise for him to speed up the process of absorbing more people and moving himself toward his perfect form. So it seems like Cell is at a disadvantage here comparing his own power to Vegeta's, whereas Vegeta only really sends Cell at a distance, and even then, he does say that one of the two has a ridiculous high battle power, but the only one that he actually says is stronger than himself, as you could see right here, is Piccolo. So again, this all seems to indicate that there's a chance that Vegeta in the manga, and probably the anime, is actually stronger out of the two between him and Cell, if even by a small amount. So with that being said, who would actually win? Well, let's get into the conclusion. So Super Saiyan Vegeta before he goes into the time chamber or Imperfect Cell? Who would win if the two of them fought each other at this point in time? Well, that's something that's definitely an interesting question to ask. And it also depends on the exact point in time. If Vegeta went to fight Imperfect Cell because the fact that he had sensed his power, say, in Ginger Town, and he battled against him instead of Piccolo, I think that Cell would have a slight advantage here just because the fact that Vegeta would not actually know anything about him. He wouldn't know that he has their different techniques and abilities. He wouldn't know that he can regenerate, you know, most likely, or any of the other aspects that he has, like these certain things that Piccolo is caught off guard. 
despite being even stronger than Vegeta. So it's definitely worth mentioning or worth thinking about to say that Vegeta could have easily been caught off guard if uh, Cell used the Kamehameha or one of Frieza's techniques or something like that which in turn would cause Vegeta to, you know, probably end up in the same situation where, let's say hypothetically, he got one of his arms absorbed or, you know, he got seriously injured by Cell, well, there's a strong chance at that point that Cell would be able to win the fight. However, after Piccolo explains to Vegeta exactly what Cell was and everything that happened between the two of them, I think that Vegeta probably stands a better chance of winning because, as I pointed out, Vegeta not only is seemingly stronger than Cell, based upon Cell's reaction and decision to run away rather than even uh, trying to attack him or absorb him. The thing is that Vegeta probably also would have thought of some type of strategy in order to combat this enemy so that he would be able to defeat him. And also the fact of the matter is that Cell does not have infinite energy or stamina like 17 and 18. Even after absorbing them, we never get that impression that perfect Cell has that, for example. So as a result, the thing is that Vegeta wouldn't have to worry about being worn down like he was against 18 he could just spam like his big bang attack or you know maybe use the final flash if he somehow came up with it before he went to the time chamber he definitely had the final crash that he used against raccoon you know even though vegeta tends to just use his techniques like one time in the manga and then never again for some reason but at the end of the day the fact of the matter is that he stood a chance of overcoming cell after the battle in that case so you know, it is definitely a very close fight, and I even did a poll here on my channel where I asked who would win between the two. It was a very close poll, so you guys can go over here and vote on this poll and a number of other polls I have here, but I could definitely see why some people would pick Cell, some would uh, pick Vegeta, because you know, again, it really depends on the circumstances of when they fight, even if some of the evidence seems to support Vegeta in this case. I mean, after all, he does have Vegeta's technique. But all right, guys, let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Who do you think would win, Vegeta or Imperfect Cell in his first appearance? Additionally, let me know your own thoughts down below in terms of other videos you'd like to see in the future. Uh, also, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. Consider subscribing, enabling all notifications so you can stay up to date with all my future videos. And make sure to stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.